Okay, hi everybody, it's Joe again. Uh, first of all, uh, I know we're covering a tremendous amount of information, relatively rapid fire, and that's the necessity of a, of a, of a day like this. Rest assured that the questions you have, if we can't answer them today, we will answer them in the coming days. I want to remind you that on Wednesday, uh, these sessions are being, in, in a similar form, being repeated. Both the Chi Tran and Jordan and myself will be offering sessions on Zoom, D2L basics, and D2L assessments uh, throughout tomorrow. In fact, you will have four opportunities through the day tomorrow to participate in each of those once in the morning twice in the afternoon, and once again in the evening. Now, for those of you who want to participate in all four sessions all through the day, you're more than welcome to join us. I can't think of a better way to spend a day. Now, Thursday and Friday, we will be offering uh, Zoom uh, faculty consultation sessions. You're going to be able to reach out to Jordan, to Chi Tran, to myself, and we can uh, we can more we can get more granular on some of the questions you have. We will help you through your D2L questions, your Zoom questions, as you might need. But that's not all. I want you to keep in mind as we move to uh, remote teaching, and as the college is closed in that respect, we're still working. So next week, you can email us, contact us, send us uh, uh, join our Zoom links that we'll make available to you. Uh, we are here to help you through the duration of this, uh, this uh, event that the college is going through. So I want you just to know uh, we are here to help you. Okay, just wanted to get that out of the way. Uh, we, will, we will take a hard stop at 12 so we could stop for lunch and then we'll resume again at 1 o'clock. Uh, this hour, what I want to cover with you is setting up your homepage in D2L for remote teaching. It's relatively straightforward to do, and actually, it's, it's actually a lot of fun to do. I think you're, you will enjoy it. The important thing to remember is this. As an instructor, when you are assigned a course to teach for Hack, you are automatically provided a D2L course shell. It's out there, your students are enrolled in it, and all it's waiting for is you to enter some cool content. And that's what we're gonna talk a little bit about here now uh, this morning. Uh, you guys, I'm sharing, you can see my shared screen, correct? Okay, so I'm back here in my hack, and I am going to, uh, again, what we can do, how do I move this bar? There we go. Uh, you'll notice when you log into my hack, you can access Brightspace here in the right hand, uh, rightmost column, here at the top center of the rightmost column, Brightspace D2L. And you just click on it. And since I've been logged out for a bit, it may ask me for my credentials again. And poof, here we are. Uh, this is your homepage. Uh, this is your uh, of D2L when you log in. A couple things you're going to want to notice immediately. First of all, on the left-hand column, all of your courses are going to be listed. Notice that I'm defaulted to be looking at the spring 2020 courses. So that's where you want to be as well. You can click on, if, if you've taught courses in the fall, you could click on fall, and courses that you taught in the fall will be available. And notice this spiffy scroll bar along the top, you can click on any previous semester and show those courses you have been teaching. It's just a great way to get to where you want to go. For our purposes this semester, of course, 2020-30, spring 2020, and that's going to bring us here. Isn't that wonderful? Easy to do. Now, this is the first place you're going to land when you log into D2L. 
A couple other things you're going to notice uh, is this grid with these nine little boxes. This is just another way to search on your, the other courses you are enrolled in. You can type some information in there and search on it if you should want. Uh, the little envelope here represents email. And I prefer not to use the email from this particular part of D2L. I like to wait until I get into an actual course to use email. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, subscription alerts, we may or may not mention. Uh, it's, uh, that's somewhat secondary. The little bell will indicate any update alerts. So when you post something to your class, when you grade something for your students, the students will see this little orange dot that uh, lets them know, hey, my instructor's done something, or one of my other instructors have done something, and they could click on that. We'll see that in the course as well. Notice uh, you will have your name with your profile picture. The first thing I want y'all to do is this. When you click on your name, you could click on profile, and this is going to be important during this time. Make sure you change your picture up Upload a picture of yourself. Um, do your students know who you are and what you look like because you've been teaching them face to face? Uh, hopefully, if they've been attentive, they, they, they do know. But this is just a nice way to let students connect with you a little more by actually seeing your happy face in a profile picture. You could simply click on change picture, upload it, and away you go. So that's just something uh, you can do and then save and close as well. Uh, Notice here also, if your students are saying, where can I find help? It's right here for them. Student resources, bright space resources for students. That will help them navigate and use D2L, where they're kind of new to it. And of course, also Zoom resources for students. And in a little bit, I'm going to show you where that's even more available for them as well. Hack college-wide news announcements that somehow relate to learning or otherwise will be posted here in the news section. So this is something that you could check out and scroll down. Okay, and one more thing on this landing page in D2L. Scroll all the way down, and I want you to see here, you will have this little box, Help for Instructors. If you click on live chat, that's going to connect you with some friendly people at Brightspace D2L. Uh, I think they'll be more than happy to help you out. It's just a chat type feature where you can ask questions and they'll help you out with things. If you're looking for just some general definitions and process type information in using D2L, this middle button here, Desire to Learn Help, is something also available to you, another good resource. The one you're going to be really excited about is the FRC, the Faculty Resource Center. It's in that Faculty Resource Center that you will be able to access CDI's training materials. And while I'm here super briefly, I'm going to go ahead and click on that so you can see. Uh, here we are in uh, the FRC, the Faculty Resource Center. And what I've been talking about, Jordan's been talking about, Chi Tran's been talking about today, you'll scroll down here on the table of contents and you'll find Remote Teaching Readiness, RTR. This is where you'll come and click to find out all kinds of cool things on how to use Zoom, how to use D2L, and how to teach remotely. This is your go-to spot. I want you to visit this frequently. As this event for Hack uh, continues, we will be constantly updating information here in it. So I want to really encourage you to make use of the RTR. All right? So there you go. Faculty Resource Center. I'm going to close that out. Now I'm back here to my home page. Okay, so how do you set up your course, specifically the home page, so that it is inviting to your students, so that it's easy for your students to find information? Let's take a look. For purposes of demonstration today, I've created a sample course here called CRS 101, Your Hack Course. Now, this is where you're going to see your English course, your math course, your history course, whatever you are teaching. Go ahead and click on it. And this is going to be the typical home page that you will see and that your students are going to see. 
and here's where you can get started working. All right, first and foremost, the way I have this set up, you're gonna notice first I have a news item set up. These are called widgets. If you look here, there's a, it's kind of like a white box. That's called a widget. If you see here on the right-hand side, something called Access Class Zoom Link, that's called a widget. If you look at the updates little box, that's called a widget. Widgets are things that you can place on your homepage. You can create custom widgets that you could use in your course and so forth. The one you're definitely going to want to make sure you're including is the news widget. I believe the default home page that you should see when you go into your course already has the news widget. But I'm going to show you where you can access these things anyways. Now, a little earlier today, someone asked, Joe, how can I post my Zoom links on my D2L homepage for my students? And here's what we've done. We've created this access Zoom link widget uh, that you can use or create yourself where you can post your Zoom links for students. Awesome, so easy to do. Uh, any content you create will be displayed here under Content Browser. The calendar is a default widget, and so as quizzes come due, as, as assignments come due, uh, and Jordan will talk a bit about that this afternoon, uh, those due dates will post in here. The updates widget will show changes made to your course or something has happened. Someone has, there are three new discussion topics. There are five new Dropbox assignments uploaded. There are 12 quizzes to be graded and that you can find under updates. What's really gonna drive things for you is this navigation bar. You see me moving the cursor here from the left to the right. Every time you wanna come home to your home page here, you simply click on Course Home. Down here I showed you the content browser where you can display content, but also you, you and your students can access content by clicking Content here. And we're gonna spend some time on this momentarily because this is where you're gonna be doing a lot of creating for your class. Uh, you have opportunity to create discussions if you wanna create a frequently asked questions discussion board where students can post questions and you can post answers, you could create that here. Um, I don't know, Jordan may or may not, time permitting, talk a bit about discussions. Uh, if not, we'll have those resources available for you. Jordan will be talking about using the Dropbox. The Dropbox has everything to do with assignments. Um, uh, D2L just calls assignments a Dropbox. You create a Dropbox, it's a place where students upload, submit their homework. It's where you post homework assignments. We good? Okay. Uh, and then, of course, there's quizzes assessments. Jordan's going to be talking about that this afternoon. Uh, so eat a light lunch. I mean, you want to stay alert for it. It's going to be the, uh, it's going to be the, the keynote of this whole day uh, in the afternoon. All right, so that's Dropbox and quizzes. Jordan may also touch on grades. If students currently reach out to you and are asking you, hey, Prof, what's my current grade in the class? What did I get on the last test? What did I get on the last homework assignment? If you want, you can create a grade book, a simple grade book for your students so that they can follow along and see their grades as they are and as you grade them and upload them. Uh, email is going to be a way you can communicate with students. Now, this can be a little uh, difficult for some faculty and students to understand. In Hackland, we have two email addresses actually. You have your official hack email address. For example, jdmendrz at hack.edu. That's my employee email address. D2L assigns an email address to me as well, jdmendrz at ehack.hack.edu. It's somewhat similar for your students. Your students have their hack 
defined Hotmail address, but then they also have a D2L defined email address. If we have some time, I will touch on email. Uh, rest assured, plenty of information on the FRC on how to use email. If you're comfortable using web-based email, you've got this. It works just the same way. Here is another important tool. This is the one drop-down item on the navigation bar, and that's resources. And again, you can point your students to these first two, Brightspace resources for students, Zoom resources for students. And you can actually uh, modify this drop-down if you want, or you can just leave it uh, alone. One of the things I want to point out to you is this. And one of the questions earlier was, Joe, how do I keep attendance? How do I make sure I'm seeing that my students are actually going into D2L? All right, well, you can click here on class list, and that's going to show you every student. You got to scroll a bit, it's going to show you every student that's enrolled in your class. So, here we can see here's Joe Mandresky. If you see a green dot, that means that that person is currently in D2L, not necessarily in your course, but they're in D2L. You'll see their username, their defined user ID, identified role as faculty, and here, last access, last access to this particular course shell identifies March 17th, 2020, and currently that's where I'm in there. One of our students, uh, Sam Pluser, the last time he visited this class was back in January. So this will be a nice way to check to see if your students are actually jumping into the D2L course shell you're working hard to create for them. You know what? It's actually a fun time because this is so much fun to work with and use. I, I just get giddy using D2L. This is very straightforward, useful stuff. Okay. so. We've touched on a few things here. Let's get back to the course home. You've got this default, and it's working for you, but you want to make some changes. It's a little bit of a step-by-step -step process, so just be mindful. If you don't get this the first time, we're here to help walk you through it. If you need to make changes to your course shell, you're gonna come here to edit course. This button, your students will not see. Only you see it as the faculty member. Edit course. There are a bazillion options here for you to work with. Don't worry about them. You're only gonna need to use a couple of them. Don't ever click and start working on stuff that you have no idea about because it could get you into trouble. Instead, reach out to uh, your CDI uh, instructional designer and we'll help you out with any of those questions. But let's take a look right now at home pages. Again, we've been talking about home page. And you're going to notice that the active home page is currently the hack course home that I created for Professor Bob. All right? We know that because it's showing here that it is active. That lets me know that this is the active course homepage. Your typical course homepage will be the hack course homepage. Let's take a look at how that's different. You come here to active homepage and I'm going to change it to hack course home and click apply. And then if I come back up here to course home, notice looks a little different, doesn't it? The news widget is still there because that's a default for the uh, home page. Notice we still have updates, calendar, role switch, and content browser, and the same navigation bar. This is the default. This is what you will typically see. But if you want to make this a bit different, you have to make some changes. So we come back here to edit course, come back here to home pages, and what I can do. Well, you think, I really like this uh, Hack Course homepage, but I want to make some changes to it. You cannot make changes to this particular instance 
because this is the college defined one. And if you try to change that here, which you can't, it would change it for everybody. So you need to make a copy of it. So what you would do is click the little down arrow next to the home page, the, the, the default home page, and you would simply click on copy. And what it's going to do right below it, it's going to create a copy for you. Now we got to make changes to it. So to make changes to it, you point to it, highlight it, and click with the left mouse button. Here you could give it your own name. So I'm going to call this the Hack Course Home Joe Mend. Okay? And we're going to keep it that it's widget based. We're even going to keep the layout. Don't try to get too fancy or overthink what your course homepage should be set up for during these times. Just make it practical. Maybe make a few small changes to it that we're discussing here today so that students who are taking your class and taking someone else's class and taking someone else's class is having a very similar consistent experience when they're logging into these courses that's important so we've got the content browser I want to keep that updates I want to keep that calendar I want to keep that Google Apps I want to keep that you won't see it but your students will so they can access some of the Google applications Role switch in the current iteration of D2L, not necessary. So I'm just going to point to the X button and poof, gone it is. I want to add a widget. I want to add a widget here to the right hand column. So I'm going to click Add Widgets. And there are system widgets and there are custom widgets. System widgets are just the default type of things. You can scroll through them and see if there's anything you're interested in adding like student surveys, Gettysburg resources to hack students. Again, work with your CDI uh, 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 instructional designer if you want to talk through what's what. If I click on custom widget, uh, there are more. And the one I'm looking for, I hope it's here. Um, no, maybe it's... Oh, here we go. I want to use the Access Class Zoom link. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that, and I'm going to add that. And here it is. It'll drop it down here at the bottom. If I don't like that location, I simply hover over it with the mouse, I move my mouse over the little two dotted lines, click, hold the left mouse button, and drag up. You'll see the little bar display. That's where it'll go. Let go of the mouse button and poof. There it is. We could click save and close. And then what I can do is select here for my active home page. Hack Course Home, Joe Mend, and click on Apply. If I click back up here to Home Page, we should see that change. And there it is. Welcome to the course. And you'll notice that uh, new uh, active Zoom link. What I'm going to encourage you to do, now here's the question. And here's what you're asking. Well, Joe, if I make a change to this, isn't this going to affect everybody who uses this widget? Well, that's, the, that's a problem, but I'm going to show you how we're going to fix that. Because if you edit this and change these Zoom links, well, then somebody else who might be using the same widget is going to have a problem. So what we're going to do, I'm going to simply come back here to Edit Course. And I'm going to come here to widgets because I'm going to make my own widget because it's super easy to do. And it's going to be, uh, I'm going to click here on create a widget. And I'm going to call this Joe Mend Zoom Link Widget. 
Click on save to just save that name. I'll come over here to content. And mind you, I am not expecting anybody here to be widget creating experts in one hour. Please don't worry about this. This is what we have the resources for, and this is a great topic to talk with your instructional designer about. And since, so what do I want to display in that widget? What I want to display here is what I want my students to see. So I could say, say something like, click this link to access the lecture Zoom link. And what you will do is type in, and I don't have one in front of me or to paste one. So whatever that Zoom link is, you'll paste it there. I could continue here. Click this link for office hours. And again, you'll take that Zoom link that you created that we talked about this morning that you did a copy on, and you could paste that Zoom link right here. Click on Save and Close. And here it is, Joe Mend Zoom Link Widget. You have some options here. Customizing, which I would not have you worry about because that's not editing. Copying it if you want to make a copy of it. Edit this particular one if you want to make changes to it. If you caught a misspelling or you needed to change a Zoom link. Okay. Going back to home pages and working with this default. If I click on that home page, and I want to put my new Zoom link widget here. I'm going to delete this one. Come here to add widgets. Click on custom widget with the little, and there it is, Joe Mend Zoom link widget. Click on add. I'm gonna move that up to the top. Click save and close. And then when I click on my course home, there is that Zoom link widget. Once you've defined that Zoom link and you've made it recurring at any time, that link simply works. When your students click on it, as long as you're in that Zoom meeting hosting it, they'll have access to talk to you. They'll have access for that lecture. Relatively straightforward to do. Okay, that's how to add a widget. It's a lot to go over quickly. We're here to help you make that a, a reality when you're ready. Here's another important one. How do you add a news item? This is gonna be such an effective way to communicate with your students. Every time they log into this course shell, if you, you can have a new news item every day, which is some update. Here's what we're working on today. Here's the textbook chapter I want you to be reviewing. Uh, I've uploaded an assignment to the Dropbox reminders, anything you want to share with your students to add a link or to add a new news item, you simply come here to news, click the down arrow, and click on new news item. Give it a headline. And tell your students what you want to tell them. Scroll down a bit, show the availability. You can define when you want that note to display. You can have it set to display beginning tomorrow or next week. Or if the default is, I, I want them to see this now, just go with the current, that, the, the default of now. You can remove a news item at a specific future date if you want to. 
I like to sh keep them all visible so that my students can see the progression of the news items I've uploaded for them uh, in case they've missed any. I could add an attachment. If I wanted to attach a PDF, hey students, in yesterday's lecture, uh, we talked about uh, how to define uh, the orbit of Mercury around the sun. I've attached a PDF document that explains how to do those calculations in determining planet orbits, and you could add that file. I'm going to go ahead and click on Publish, and then notice, you see there's something new posted here. If I click back on the course homepage, there it is. The newest news item will always display on the top. Okay. And so you want to keep that in mind because as you're adding news items, stuff that you might want students to be aware of is going to go further and further down. And I've discovered a lot of students aren't familiar with the concept of scrolling. If they don't see it on the page, they don't think it's there. So sometimes that's just a uh, gentle reminder. So that's how you add a news item. Make frequent use of that. One more thing I want to definitely touch on is content, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. This is where you are going to add all your stuff, all of your lecture notes, your PowerPoints, links to videos. And you can organize this in a really nice way. Think of a book, and opening the book, you go right to the table of contents. You might want to start with a getting started module maybe a module one or a week one. Okay, Joe, how do I add a new module? You simply come down here in the left round pointing where it says add module, click inside, and type it in. And press enter. And notice you now have a new module. I can upload stuff easy enough. I can drag and drop. Let's see if I can, that still is good. I have here, I think, yeah, here I have an assignment. I could take this file, drag it over, and drop it in. Ah, but that didn't work because I made a mistake. What you have to do first is click on New and Upload Files. I'm going to upload from my computer. Drop files here, drop files here, or click below. I can simply drag and drop. Notice that the little box turns blue. Let that go, and it's going to upload. And then simply click on Add, and poof. Now, here is an assignment, responsive web design. This is what your students will see when they click on content. They could click on that, open it up, and it will display uh, that, that Word document. It can take a little bit of time for it to load, preparing the document for preview. It sometimes can take a little bit of time. Here's the good news. Students will have access to this download button so that they can download it to their computer. All right, that's being a little fussy right now. Let me bounce back to table of contents and I can show you some of what I've already done. Notice here under getting started, I uploaded a course syllabus. And it'll let you know what kind of document you've uploaded. Here it's a PDF. A little further down, it's a PowerPoint presentation. Down here, it's an image. All right. So the Start Here module, students click on it, and there it is. So it's an easy way to upload your course syllabus. You can upload anything in content this way. Isn't this great? Nice and easy to do. You can use these, uh, what we would call these as breadcrumbs right here, what I've highlighted. Let me zoom back out here so you can see that. And this is just a nice way you can always go back to the getting started or the table of contents here. You can upload images. I use this one because since we didn't have a winter this year, remember back in March 2018, that was an official snow day. So, you can do things like that as well. And of course, you can upload PowerPoint presentations if, you're, if your textbook publisher offers their PowerPoint slides and you like to use those in class, you can go ahead and upload them here.
Okay. All right. Let's take a look at one more thing and then we can open it up for some questions. Again, Jordan will discuss uh, Dropbox quizzes and grades. Let's look at how easy it is to use email to communicate with your students. Simply click on email. And again, it's just simply web-based email. You will notice you have an inbox, sent mail, drafts, trash, compose button. Now, oftentimes, you will see no messages here. That doesn't mean there aren't there. D12 can sometimes be uh, exhibit a bit of a glitch. The best thing to do is always filter by all messages, and then you'll notice all kinds of emails. Since these are actual emails, I'm going to go ahead and just turn that off for right now. I can simply compose. I click the Compose button. I could type my email here in, this in the body. I can attach anything just like I would in my Gmail, my Yahoo, where, whatever. It's, it's the same principle where you can upload files, attach files. And we want to give it a subject line as well. D2L has decided to make it just a bit laborious to add uh, people to, in, to the to uh, file, to who to send it to. All right, so you don't want to just start typing away here at addresses. So you come here and you'll click on the address book. And notice, what will display are all of your students in the class. Easy, easy, easy. All right, most students, real students, will have their eHack or D2L address and also their regular hack or hawk mail address. Now, here, uh, Matt Dillon, Robin Zinspring, Sam Pluser, these are, these are creations of my imagination. They don't actually exist in physical form. So they don't have a, uh, they don't have a, a Gmail. Uh, they do not have a hawk mail account. Oh, Sam does. I did create, uh, uh, I set him up with a Yahoo account, eHack. But anyways, this is how you can select all your students. If you want to send out something class-wide, you simply click this box right here on the top, too. Notice all of the boxes get highlighted. The next step is important. You have to actually click on the little to button here to populate the recipients. And then, one more step, click on add recipients. It's a bit clunky but it works. And that's the best way you can email all of your students. Put in a subject line, enter the body, and then click on send. Easy enough. As students respond, you'll see it populate here in your inbox. Again, to make sure you're seeing your students' emails, click on all messages and they'll display. This is a great tool as well because students can uh, send things to you. If you're not comfortable using Dropbox, you can have them email assignments to you instead. Here's the important thing that I would strongly recommend. Insist that when your students are communicating with you that they are using either their eHack email address or their Hawkmail email address. <clears throat> that almost serves as a contract with our students because it's defined just to them. You know if an email is coming from a Hotmail account, it's coming from that student. I typically won't accept emails from generic Yahoo or Gmail accounts. I know we covered a tremendous amount here in a very, very brief period of time. Uh, shall we take at least a few questions now that we've got about we've got about 10 minutes or so before we're going to break for lunch? Uh, let me click on stop share. I'll bet there's no questions because this was so straightforward. I'm I'm convinced of that. Where do we start at? What timestamp? 11. Let me jump up here a little bit. 11. 
I'm seeing 11.17. Kathleen. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Kathleen says, please, please add your last name to your course title. We see students in the library who don't know the instructor's name. And with everyone jumping into Brightspace, this would make it easier for them. Um, yeah, now keep in mind, you won't be able to modify your class title. That's already defined for you. Uh, what you can do is uh, put something on the home page with, with your name on it. You could create a widget with your uh, name and information and, and picture. Okay. Will you be demonstrating how to add the widget with our Zoom links? Okay, so we did do that uh, in, in this, this session. We went through that a couple times. Uh, we, can, we can provide a video on that. We do have some resources available in the FRC that will talk you through how to do that. Uh, it's a little tricky, and if you're not comfortable using D2L, it could be a little unintuitive. Let us help you with that. Jennifer asks, if we want to only use our hack email to communicate with our students, can we deactivate the D2L email? I've had problems in the past with missing student emails because they went into one or the other and I didn't catch it. No, you cannot deactivate your, uh, your D2L email address. However, you can set it up so that any email sent to your eHack address is forwarded to your regular hack address. So if you want to learn how to do that, I believe we have a job aid available for that. And I'm looking straight here at Jordan. Jordan, that's something I, we're going to check on. If we don't have one, we should have one. So you could actually forward your eHack or D2L email to uh, whichever email address you want. And that will help uh, uh, address that. I teach an ESL lab, not the lecture part. I do not have access to D2L for this class. Only the primary teacher does. Please advise. Okay, all you need to do is reach out to the uh, instructor of that class, the primary teacher, and say, listen, I need to be able to access the shell. Or I wouldn't say listen. That comes across a little rude. I'd say, I need access to this course shell. Would you please add me as faculty? And he or she can simply go into the class list and add you as faculty. If you have any questions on that or need help with that, again, reach out to me or if you're having any challenges. Uh, David Liu writes, I have also found that when students send me emails through D2L, it appears they come from me. So when I respond, I'm responding to myself and they do not receive the email even when responding to all. Um, I don't know, David. I would have to, quite honestly, look at that specifically with you. I've not encountered that before. Uh, Casey says, I disagree that role changing is not helpful, at least for faculty. It has been very helpful to see how things look to students. As you add modules, text will sometimes appear much smaller for them than you, for example. So Casey, you are 100% awesomely correct. So thank you for posting that. The reason I got rid of that widget is for one reason. If you click, under your, uh, click on your name in the upper right-hand corner where it displays in your detail homepage, that little drop-down will allow you to view as student. So effectively, it's right there where you can change uh, roles. So you could do either one, but uh, so there is a way to do that. If you like keeping that role switcher, definitely keep it on. You're spot on. It is helpful to see it as a student. Thank you for posting that. And Deb, if you're not seeing that widget as a choice, that's actually a good thing. Uh, that helped ac actually answer a question for me that that's unique to my custom widgets uh, so that in your case, there's not worry that you would be changing someone else's. It would just be a matter of you creating your own uh, Zoom widget. Okay, and so Michelle, uh, you had indicated the Zoom widget isn't in my system widget list. Do y'all see it? Thank you for using y'all, and um, or am I misunderstanding? You're not misunderstanding. Once you create a custom widget, 
uh, for as your own, then you'll have access and availability to it and be able to modify it for your different classes. Thank you for asking that. Uh, can someone share the Zoom widget? Right, that's, again, you're going to go ahead and create your own Zoom widget with your own content, and we'll, we can definitely walk you through that. Okay, uh, Tom asks, does the Zoom link created for a class remain the same for that class for the entire run of the class, or do we need to create a new Zoom link each time we sit down? Uh, good question, Tom. Uh, as we talked about a little earlier in the morning, you could create one Zoom link, create it to be, uh, and, and you could create one Zoom link, make it available at all times, and you'll use that one Zoom link throughout the semester. It doesn't go away that you do not create a new Zoom link for each time uh, or instance of a class. You just create it once. It's a recurring meeting you define it as. Yep, and Michelle has answered that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Jordan Berry says, Joe, you're doing an awesome job. Also, it is suggested that you create your own widget to use your Zoom lecture meeting and office hours. The widget will then appear under custom widget. Thanks for agreeing with me, Jordan. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kathleen does mention the new Brightspace app, Pulse, is super helpful for students, too. Uh, we're not going to jump into that today, uh, but do check it out. Uh, actually, it seems to be uh, relatively well-received by students. Tommy asks, if I'm holding office hours and currently no student is there, but I have to step away for a moment, bathroom, whatever, is there a quick and easy way to post a be right back message? or just use chat for that? That's a great question. I, Tommy, I do encourage you, when you gotta go, you gotta go. You gotta take care of that. I would post in chat, hey, I'll be right back. And let your students know ahead of time, via email, uh, or in a news item in D2L, listen, I'm holding office hours for two hours. I may need to occasionally step away, or I'm talking with someone on the phone. Just stick around. I will work with you during that office hour period. Thank you for posting that. Very, uh, very relevant. Uh, let's see. Okay, and, and Karen, we're still going back and forth about the one Zoom uh, meeting ID. You just have to create one and done. That's all you'll need for Zoom. Okay, there's a waiting room feature that you may want to use. Yep, we talked about that briefly, so students can pop into your, into your Zoom session, but in the waiting room, and they just hang out there until you allow them in. David writes, honestly, this is overwhelming to have all of these trains back to back without some pre-developed widgets that could be shared and I am pretty tech savvy. So David, you're right. This is a lot of information to cover in a relatively brief period of time. This is meant to be informational and let you know what's available and where to get for the help. Regarding creating widgets, honestly, creating a, a Zoom link widget is very straightforward. Uh, could have that been shared out as a, gen as a generic one? While yes, it could have been made college-wide, then you would have the role of needing to create a copy of it, to make changes to it, to make it your own. So actually just learning how to create it once for yourself will be most effective. But I'm, I'm, I'm right on there with you. We're covering a lot all at once. Don't feel overwhelmed. If you need to, David, you give me a call. I'll help you with anything that I can. Uh, let's see here. Tommy asks, uh, yesterday in the English department meeting, we stumbled upon the possibility that not everyone has remote access to our hack desktop files. Has this been addressed? Unknown. What I would suggest you do is send an email to IT support, and I would carbon copy Jason Bowden on that. Uh, that's a bit out of uh, my uh, wheelhouse, so I can't give you a definitive answer, Tom. Stavrola asks, I created a Zoom link to one class. Should I create another one for my other course, or can I use the same link? Uh, you know, Stavrola, awesome question. 
My personal feeling is I would create a separate Zoom link for each class you're teaching. It makes more sense for your students and it'll help you actually remain uh, well, sane in that you'll know what Zoom session you're in at, at what time. So I think that's going to be helpful for you to create uh, one Zoom link per class. Karen asks, can any computer or pen stylus be used on our computers for the whiteboard function? And uh, Chi Tran and Jordan both mentioned a little earlier that yes, yes you can. And if you want to learn how to use a pen stylus or, or a tablet, reach out to Chi Tran. The man is a legend working with this stuff and he will help you with that. Okay, and I see some reaffirmations about creating different links for different classes. Karen raises a great question. Don't we need to use blind carbon copy because of FERPA? You know, I don't know exact, I do not feel confident to say yes or no to that, although that sounds absolutely reasonable. Here's the thing, Karen, if you think in a face-to-face -face class, uh, your students are gonna see who the other students are in that class. They already see the faces, they already know the names. So if you're sending out an email that covers everybody in the class that's important for the whole class, I don't think you have to use the blind carbon copy. On the other hand, let's say there's a subset of students. There's five students who just didn't complete a homework assignment and you wanna reach out to them to remind them via email, get that assignment in. Well, you could, re you could create five separate emails to each of those students, or if you just wanna send one generic one, hey, I've not received your homework assignment yet, then I would use the blind carbon copy because Jordan doesn't need to know that, Chris doesn't need to know that, uh, Pete didn't bother to do the homework. So I think there's reasons to do the blind carbon copy, but as far as a, a general uh, class-wide email, I don't think that's necessarily necessary. But I will defer to those experts at HAC who are FERPA experts. Okay, uh, please state one more time where we could find this video to easily access to review as we are building our courses. So we will, after this is all recorded and done and uploaded, uh, we will be providing a link to it in our, uh, in the FRC, in those remote teaching readiness module resources. And uh, I'm sure we're gonna see others, uh, Cindy, Jason, also providing email updates with links to that information. But for sure, we'll provide links to it in the FRC. Okay, we still have a couple minutes here. Uh, Eileen is trying to set up the, her course homepage. I must have missed a step. Is there a quick how-to without watching the whole video again? Suggestion, post this video, post this information in. Well, uh, yeah, uh, actually setting up your homepage and uh, modifying that. We've got some job aids and some videos available on that. That's all available in that uh, uh, FRC uh, resource. Is the attendance of the students an issue for now? Uh, Stravola, I'm not sure what you're, what you're asking there, what issue might be or, or what you're really uh, asking for there. Now, a couple other people, Deb and Lee, have identified David's issue as well. David, that may be something that needs to be escalated to D2L. If you're seeing emails coming to you that are apparently from you, uh, and again, I may be getting that a bit wrong, that was several messages ago, that could be a glitch in D2L that we're going to have to uh, identify a little further. And then Jennifer asks, so how exactly, so how exactly do we uh, forward D12 email to our hack email? Again, uh, I'm not going to attempt that here now in, in the one minute I have left. Uh, we do have resources out on the FRC that will show you how to do that. If you wanna be walked through the steps, Jennifer, if you reach out to Jordan, he can help you uh, with that. And then Chitran mentions, Joe, superb work as usual. 
period. I will work with anyone individually if you want to use a Wacom tablet or iPad in Zoom whiteboard. Thank you, Chi Tran. Anytime, anytime. Anytime. Okay, David Bailey writes, Joe, everyone is doing an excellent job. I just felt the need to express that uh, what I was feeling because I am sure others feel this too. The reason why I was asking for a Zoom widget is so that we all could be similar in our D2L shells so students would see consistency during these inconsistent times. Can you at least share the wording that you are using so that I could mimic it? David, that is a brilliant idea. And yes, so Jordan, I'm gonna ask you to do two things for me. One, identify if we could create a widget and how quickly to, we could create a video showing it and how to save a copy of it to tweak it for each individual instructor or to at least send out the generic text that they could paste into their widget, okay? Thank you. Yeah, we're, I, I think that's a fine idea. Thank you so much, David. We're going to provide a, a, a resource for that for you. I, that's appreciated. Uh, Mary Ann, what is the name contact info of the gentleman who is offering to work with tablets with Zoom? That is, yeah, you got it right below, Chi Tran Wong, uh, uh, the legendary Chi Tran Wong. And he's over here in Whitaker 126, the CDI uh, Bay. Uh, if you happen to be uh, around, but he can help you out. Okay, we have reached 1201. I know we want to stop so we all can get some, uh, so we can all get some food. And we are going to be resuming at 1 o'clock. And the content, the content. Okay. Uh, we will be resuming at 1 o'clock, whereby... Uh, Jordan is going to be talking to you about Dropbox assignments, quizzes, gradebook. It's a must. It's a must attend uh, if you want to really enjoy the full rounded experience uh, of today. Uh, I have enjoyed this morning's session. Never has four hours blasted by so quickly. I appreciate the questions. They are thoughtful. They are insightful. They are helpful. And I am delighted to see that you're, you've got that passion and care and concern for wanting to reach out to, in the best way possible to our students. I am more confident than ever that we're going to work through this remote learning uh, phase here at Hack, and that we're going to do it well. Thank you so much. I'm going to break now. Uh, go grab some food, and we'll see you all back here. Oh, hang on. Is there one more? During the lunch break, break time, do you want us to stay logged in or log out and come back in? Yep, so Karen asks, during the lunch break, do you want us to stay logged in or log out and come back in? Karen, uh, you could do either way. If you want to just stay logged in, uh, you're free to do so. Nothing's going to happen uh, otherwise. If you want to egg, leave the meeting and then click back on the link to come back in, uh, e either way. And let's see, Heather writes, thanks so much for your preparation, time, and professionalism. Can uh, Heather, thank you. Uh, it's, it's all the faculty who are, are participating. We had a high number of 140 this morning. I am excited about that. I appreciate it. Okay, everybody, we will see you again at 1 o'clock. Thank you.